Hi, everyone. It's Yvonne Emil Elizondo again. So we're still frozen in. Um, we're not going anywhere, but um, the snow and the ice is starting to melt. I hope you can't hear it because, oh my gosh, it literally just dropped <laughs> from, I guess, from my, from my roof. So um, I hope you can't hear it. <laughs> I hope it doesn't scare me like that a whole bunch. But anyways, uh, I do want to jump in and, and do a quick video since I have, have nothing else to do. Just thought I would share some knowledge and some insight about magic. Okay. Yes, magic. But I said that we would start each of these videos with the quick, um, you know, shuffling of the cards and taking a look at what our message is for um, today. Again, these are Kyle Gray's, uh, the angel guide cards. And as I shuffle, I'll just uh, give you a a quick idea of, oopsie, just dropped one of them, here we go. Uh, a quick idea of um, okay, today's message. Okay, so let's pick the, oh geez, I kind of made that. These are the cards. All right, so let's choose. Oh, I love this card. Raise your vibration, raise your vibe. Okay, look how pretty that is. All right, so this is actually pretty good for today's uh, video because we're talking about magic and in order to work some magic, you need to raise your vibe. All right, so again, uh, this video is not an academic or scholarly video by any means. It's just my interpretation of my experience having worked with magic. And I do want to start off by saying that my background, my doctoral work, um, my doctorate is in um, theology specifically holistic theology. So what does that mean? And what does that have to do with magic? Well, um, holistic theology is, is, is not only taking a look and studying and applying the study of um, religion or spirituality, mainstream, traditional religion and, and spirituality, but it's also taking a holistic perspective and studying or accounting for all of the additional religious or um, spiritual practices, scriptures, um, texts that were not necessarily included in the original mainstream or traditional religious practices. So for example, um, the Bible um, has and had at one point included scriptures that were removed at one point, right? Um, there was additional scriptures that were found in the um, Nag Hammadi um, desert, the Dead Sea Scrolls, <laughs> there goes another one, just dropped them from the sky. Um, uh, so there's a lot of ancient texts that traditional or mainstream religious or spiritual traditions don't necessarily account for. That's what I study. And I love that stuff. And so I've been working magic or, or because I'm a witchy gal and have been forever since I was a kid. Um, and that's what prompted me to follow that specific uh, road when it came to academia. And so I've had the pleasure and the fortunate luck to have worked with and studied with scholars who have written books about these ancient texts and um, scholars that have actually done in-depth study, uh, you know, at Harvard and Oxford and all of those, you know, Ivy League, you know, facilities about um, magic. So I want to share with you what I've learned in my experience, how I define magic, and who knows, I mean, if anything else, you can laugh at me and just enjoy the video, just watching me just freak out with like, you know, snow falling off my roof. Okay, so let's, again, this is not an academic or scholarly video, but I do want to start off with the definition of magic, and this is a very simple definition, and again, I'm not going to expressly discuss how to do magic, but just more the definition of how it works because it is a real concept, okay? All right, so magic involves intention setting for sure. If you know me, you know that intention setting is like top of my list. So intention setting energy, okay? Putting those two together will help you mold, manage, even manipulate, that's a negatively charged word. I know we're gonna talk about that, okay? But mold and manage the outcome that you wanna manifest, that you wanna create, that you wanna experience. So again, it's intention plus energy equals managing the outcome. All right, so let's break that down because there's other components that are involved in magical work. Now, I don't do any sort of, you know, um, magical work that taps into the more darker side of magic. If that's what you like, or if that's what people like, and that, you know, toots their horn, I'm completely okay with that. I 
no judgment here, but that's not the kind of magic that I practice, okay? Um, and I'll go into that a little bit further in the video. But essentially what we're looking for in any type of magic, whether it's light magic, dark magic, and magic really is like neutral, like energy is neutral, right? Whatever charge we give to it is what determines whether it's light magic, um, positive magic or dark magic. So white magic, light magic or dark magic, but energy is neutral. So watch how this works. All right, so we need to have a balance before we can actually be efficient in manifesting and working with magic, we need to understand what balance is and how it works within the magical practices. Balance is a com combination of knowing yourself, knowing your environment, okay? So there is that aspect of us that is light in nature, Okay, that's the part we always tend to focus and that's all the filters and all the social media stuff typically shows us all of the light stuff. But there is a part of us, okay, sorry, other stuff dropping. There's a part of us that we call the shadow side or the darker side of us. And most of us have a really difficult time tapping into that. But in order to work magic effectively, okay, you have to tap into both ends. Now that doesn't mean that you're gonna pull that shadow energy up into your magical work. What that means is that you have knowledge of both who you are from a lighter perspective and from a shadow perspective. So as the magical saying you know, goes as above, um, so below, as without, so within, okay? So we have an understanding of how we're balanced will help us understand how we contribute to balancing our experience. So those are the components that you need for magical work, okay? All right, so let's dive into that a little bit more. What does intention setting mean? Well, I got my crystal ball. Yes, this is crystal. It's not glass. It, I, uh, I love this baby, okay? So, I mean, magical work, right? What do we do? We look in and we can see the future. This is great. I love it. No, that's actually more scrying and divination, but it's part of magic, okay? Um, I have this one too. Look how beautiful. I just love these. Anyhow, so when we're working with magic, the first aspect that I mentioned was really setting the intentions, okay? So intention setting is, um, is about setting realistic expectations, number one, um, and it's about understanding that you yourself can, in fact, manipulate your experience. So Dr. Emoto, um, you may have heard of him, maybe not, but Dr. Emoto about 30, 35 years ago, I hope I'm getting the dates right, um, he wanted to study whether we have a direct effect on our um, environment. So what he did in a short, very short version, in a scientific experiment, all scientific experiments, you know how they run, everything's equal, everything's controlled. So what he did was he took two jars of water, same type of water, same types of jars, same conditions, and he brought a group of people in. And to the first jar, he had them talk very negatively to, to the jar, hate you, you're horrible, you're nasty, you're bad, you're awful. And then to the second jar of water, he had them talk very positively. You're loving, you're awesome, you're amazing, and so forth, okay? And um, what he found out after several of these rounds was that the water that had been talked to negatively, the molecules were just broken down. There was no, no cohesiveness to them. The water that had been talked to positively, however, had these beautiful geometric patterns. So the molecules had gotten together via very geometrically, right? So he took this a step further and he said, hmm, same water, well, new water, new water, jars, people come in and he did the same thing, the same steps, except instead of this time, instead of words coming out of their mouth, all they did was set intention like in the thoughts in here. So they talk to the water negatively in their minds. They talk to the water negatively, in, positively in their minds. And guess what? Guess what? Same outcome, same outcome, okay? So what does that tell us? Our words and our thoughts actually have an impact on our external environment. It also has a significant impact on ourselves and on other people. So this is why we say you want to watch your thoughts and you want to watch your, you know, what you're saying. But anyhow, okay, so I share this experiment with you because it really is the foundation of understanding how magic works. It's not just some 
magic woo woo stuff. It's like literally happening and, and scientists are literally researching. This is the basis of how prayer works. And they're studying that too. When we pray, we set intentions. We're asking for something. We're petitioning. It's going somewhere. Okay. All right. So enough of that, but anyhow, so intention setting is, is really about, about getting to the core of what you really want to manifest. Okay. So now the second part of this is energy. So we are all energy beings. And I mentioned earlier that energy is neutral. It's either positive or negative. When we give it an intention, it becomes positive or negative, light or dark, white or shadow, whichever you want to call it. Okay. So we charge the energy in magical work with its intention. We give it direction is what we're doing. All right. And so um, when we're talking about energy, that literally can come in various forms. It can come through physical forms, dancing, um, drumming gives you, I mean, have you ever sat during a drumming session? Like, you know, your heart actually starts to beat at the rate of music. Do you know that? Yeah, check the Heart Math Institute. They, they'll tell you all about that and a lot more. Okay. But anyhow, so drumming or, or music, anything that gets that energy going. Some people like to use herbs. Some people like to use crystals. Some people like to use candles. Um, there's all sorts of ways to create that energy flow. Emotions are probably the best. You want to be able to feel that intention so you can put that energy out as you're creating your magical work. So for example, if I intend on, I don't know, manifesting myself a nice vacation, like somewhere really warm right now because it's kind of cold outside. Um, if I do the magical work and I set the intention to do that, I want to include details in my intention setting, be realistic with details, right? But I also want to feel as if I'm already in a hot, warm place. And I love cold, but right now I'm really hoping for a little bit of warm weather because my friends want warm weather. But Anyhow, so you have to feel. So emotion is a wonderful, wonderful way to get that energy going. Now I practice, and again, this isn't a video on different types of magic, but I practice mental magic. Okay, so that's more kinetic magic. And the, that means it's, it's in here. It's the visualization, it's the energy flows in here. I believe that the energy, the thoughts that we have can actually impact our environment which is basically what Dr. Emoto was saying, but I, the energy from the mental connects with the heart. And that's why they say that all magic comes from the heart. If you remove the heart and only work mental, not gonna, whoops, not gonna happen, okay? But if you include the mental work from the heart, you've got it. If you only work from the heart, then your intentions may not be as grounded as they should be. So it requires both. Again, balance, okay? All right, so, now that we have the energy work, right? Um, the work comes in, okay, literally. So you can set the intentions, you can raise the vibe, you can set your cone of power, which is what witches talk about when they're talking about energy, vibing around them, okay? You can set all of that and then manifest it out, send it out to the universe. Why? If you don't do the back end work, then guess what? It's never going to happen, right? It's like asking the universe, please, 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 I'm getting the energy from the crystal and I know my intention is to win the lotto, okay? Uh, and phew, there it is, magic sent out. Um, well, what happens if you don't buy a lotto ticket? Like, how are you ever going to win the lotto if you don't buy a lotto ticket or if you don't send your sister or your dad or somebody to go buy a lotto ticket? Like, so there has to be work on the back end. If you're looking for a job and you're trying to use magic to create that perfect career opportunity, that's wonderful. You can set it out there, okay? Use the energy, the emotion. You can feel like, you know, you're in that job role. But if you don't go looking for a job or if you don't take the steps to present yourself well in an interview, that's never gonna happen. So magic requires intention, energy, balance, and work. Oh, that was a big chunk that just fell. Okay, again, intention, energy, balance, and work. And those, my dears, are how you work with magic. If you have any questions about magic, if you wanna learn more, if you wanna learn anything about the occult or anything about the ancient teachings, um, ancient texts, 
I mean, if I don't know it, I will, I will find a way to head you in the right direction. Reach out to me at spiritualessence.com. That's spiritual-essence.com. Everybody stay safe. Try to stay warm. Try not to walk under one of these um, icicles dropping by. Stay safe, y'all. Bless of